Welcome back to the VWID Talk podcast. Uh, we are your hosts, Wes and Jan. Thank you so much for subscribing. It really means the world to us. We're volunteers and uh, we love doing this and that just makes it worth it. You remember, you can catch us on Overdrive, Spotify, and uh, Apple Podcasts, and of course here on YouTube for visual uh, visual experience. And today we wanted to give you guys a retrospective on our framework for doing modifications. This is something Jan came up with for, I mean, it, I think it seems obvious maybe when you look at it, but it's not all that obvious at first. I think this is a great way of saying, is this mod going to work? It's a step-by-step process. And so we have done um, several mods here that we're going to show you how we went through the process. Um, and that process is, is it mechanically feasible? Is the thing going to physically fit in your car? Or are you going to have to go uh, cut a piece of your dashboard out or maybe modify your trim a little bit with a Dremel tool or fabricate something, right? So that's one thing is, does it fit? And, and obviously we want things that look like they belong there from the factory. Number two is electrical feasibility. So if you just unplug the harness and plug the new part in, does it have all the wires it needs, right? Does it have the power wire? Does it have the right communications wires? Um, sometimes maybe you need a different connector. Uh, sometimes you need different signaling. And then finally, what kind of coding or adaptation changes are involved? Uh, some things you don't have to change anything at all. You can literally unplug the old thing and plug in the new thing and it just works, which is obviously what we hope for. But sometimes you got to do changes and that's where Jan's investigative work has come in. So first of all, I guess, Jan, why don't you take us through um, the first mod, which is mm -hmm. also the easiest and yet somehow the hardest to figure out. The hardest, exactly. I know. It, so the first one is talking about the enabling the metrics headlight. Okay. So what right. you're looking at is for cars that has the eyeball headlight, uh, this is how the eyeball looks inside. And you see that there are these 11 LEDs that compose the metrics. And okay. so what the car can do is that if there is an oncoming traffic, it will still keep the high beam, but only turn off those segments, not to mm -hmm. blind the oncoming traffic. Yeah. And to and, remind viewers, those tiny ones at the bottom are the super bright high beams. Yes, yes, yes those okay. are those are the those are the high beams, hundred percent. So, um, what's the value? Well, better visibility at night. It automatically switches back back and forth, and you don't have to worry about dazzling oncoming traffic. But you will right. still see. Um, because typically when there is an oncoming traffic, the high beam on the left side, the segments on the left will turn off, but the segments on the right will still illuminate um, the, yeah. the right side of the road, which is really cool, really great for uh, wildlife. And if you're going through a forest where uh, you don't want to hit a deer or something, right? No. So that, that's really good kind of. Yeah. So instead of just automatic off. turning off of the high beams, it just turns off the piece of the high beams that would be blinding the oncoming driver or the driver in front of you if yes. you're following yes. and leaves the sides of the road illuminated. Yes. That's really useful. Yep. All right. So why did we say it was both the easiest and the hardest? Well, well, <laughs> because right. you, you don't have to uh, do anything right, uh, right. from uh, adding anything into the car because your car already has it. Right. If you have the eyeball um, uh, headlight. Right. And Which would so be mechanically, the pro, pro S trim. Pro, pro S trim. So mechanically yeah. don't have to add anything or electrically don't have to add anything. And the same applies for the ID bus. Uh, but um, you have to tell the inside computer yes. that it should use this functionality and that's the the hardest because it took us a long time to figure out which setting it is yeah. um, but also if you're running the newer um software id4 and higher um, you literally need vw's consent um, or yes. spend a lot of money that you can flip right. this setting so it is not easy to make that simple change uh, yes. but um, we have a video, uh, check up there, uh, how to do it. If you want to uh, do it yourself, if you have the version, uh, software version three, you can, you can do it yourself yeah. with some, um, diagnostic tools, uh, or there are some companies who are actually offering this as a service. Yeah. This took uh, a trip to Europe on Jan's part yes. and scanning another car and then yeah. painstakingly coming through and comparing value. So thank yes, you Jan, for thank, th thank you for that. And uh, Wes is talking about the ID3 uh, that yes. uh, we have reviewed and, and tested in Europe. So uh, check out the uh, the link there. That that That's was right. a really cool car. I really loved it. That's All great. right. So, oh, uh, Wes's favorite mod, speakers. Yes. Speakers. So the great thing about the speaker mod, so this one we said is super easy as well. Um, you can directly plug and play, replace your Volkswagen stock speakers with Focal speakers, which are a really nice upgrade. You can see just looking uh, how much more substantial 
the focal speaker on the right there is. It's got a, a beefier the, the, magnet. The magnet, right? And even yeah. if you take it in hand, you kind of feel it weighs more. Yeah, yeah. But the great thing is Fakal has made this particular kit directly for Volkswagen. So, you know, other speakers you can make work with adapters and all kinds of things, which is not much harder. But this is great. This is plug and play. So, so if we the, go ahead. The, the holes match, the 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 um the connector matches, it's just literally like a direct replay. They even give you the rivets that <laughs> you yes. need to replace. So very nice. So going to the next slide, it shows that it's basically 100 percent plug and play. I would use rib nuts instead of rivets, which are basically mm -hmm. rivets with with screw threads in them that you yes. can yeah, screw yeah. it into uh, but there's no harness uh to, to do it's directly it uses volkswagen's harness there's no software changes or anything and it would only be if you bought standard um six inch speakers that would re require an adapter and so we said on our mod framework for this one uh green 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 right no mechanical mechanically it's literally drill out the old the, remove the old speakers plug in the new speakers electrically there's nothing to do there's no software the only thing is you got to take your door trim off so even though this all, is all four mind, doors, right? All you can do doors. it only on the front. Technically, you could. If you wanted well, to. Yeah. yeah. You can just do the front. But you have to take off the trim. You're removing the handles. You have to, you can break things when you take it off. And then you have to drill out the rivets that hold the OEM speakers in. And you can either, you know, reuse the rivets they supply or you can do something different. But yeah, it's dead easy to do the actual change. But getting there, right? There's always a catch, isn't there? So... There always is a catch. And it's also a great opportunity to add some sound deadening on the interior of the door. And then I yes. did that. And the, the bass is much more richer. I actually I actually oh. really like this this mod. So I, I enjoy this difference. mod quite a bit. Yeah. The, you you can hear the difference. Yes, 100%. Okay, excellent. All right. So next. Oh, this looks familiar. Tactile buttons. <laughs> so Jan, what is this? So um I've swapped the um, touch buttons that we had under our display. We still have, we have the older cars. So we have the um, software ID three cars. Mm -hmm. And there was this, this touch panel. They, they, they unfortunately get rid of it on the software four. Um, and uh, I've added these buttons from Skoda, Enyaq or Elrock. And they mm -hmm. work pretty well. Uh, they're plug and play, um, the and no coding required. The only problem is that the dash from in Skoda and VW looks completely different. So yeah. we had to fa fabricate some interfaces and like three D print those those different yeah. different pieces. And by we, we mean Jan. Yeah, uh, <laughs> do all this work. But and we, as far as we know, this is probably not compatible with software for vehicles because we, we have to figure it out. We have to we play with it. The, uh, yeah, the connector the, may or may not even be there. Exactly. So. The, the 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 switch, the headlight switch, is definitely replaceable um, on uh, the software also for vehicles. Cool. But you would lose the the max and rear buttons uh, that are um, kind of dedicated on the Skoda Skoda button. Gotcha. But, uh, and so so like why? Well, because the headlight switch was loaded with buttons, and uh, I was touching accidentally different different buttons. Typically, the windshield um, heater. heater and um, for the infotainment, I kind of felt like it was not making big difference uh, to me in kind of stealing my attention from driving. Do I press the the do I press the touch space on the button without any feedback, or do I press the screen? It, it, like, what difference does it make? No yeah. difference, right? I really wanted some tactile feedback and and real buttons, and also it, it added lock switch. Maybe on a software four vehicle, then you could just replace the replace the light switches and then use the it, touch screens on your switches on yeah, your screen. For, we could, okay. we could. But I, I let, let's 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 reverse okay. engineer the display because you already have one, so uh, yeah, we can so play good. with it. We can we okay. can play with it. So. Um, you yeah. said you said this was the hardest one yet, and it's not because, I mean, it's ironic, right? Because the hardware is completely plug and play. The connector yes. snap. You unplug yes. the old one, you plug yes. the new one. Exactly for both for both the buttons under your infotainment and your light buttons, you plug yep. it right in. There's yep. no software to change. Yep. The only problem is, does it mechanically fit? No, it does not. <laughs> um, and and so if yeah. if you want to make it like it belongs there, right? <laughs> yeah. So you custom designed uh, a part to. Three parts. Three you parts, custom designed yeah. the parts for two parts for the screen for the buttons, and then one part for the light cluster. Yep. Yep. And then you also had to cut some trim out of your dash. But the good news yep. was that that is completely covered up by the screen. Exactly. So if you ever yep. want to reverse it, it can be changed you back. Can. You can. You can. Yes. But and by the way, the, the model is now on Maker World, and oh. we also referenced the video up there. Uh, so if you want to watch that full video, um, you can. You can take a look. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Cool. Ooh, this is your favorite one. Yay. This is my favorite one. So, and this is funny because at first 
you know, I was complaining about the buttons over and over again. And Jan finally said, well, you know, Wes, they make these for that, for the Atlas and for the Tiguan. And I said, they won't fit You're What are you talking about, Jan? So Jan gave me the spark and said, I think you can. And so I went on a parts hunting odyssey and we found the right parts. Um, and as you can see, they mechanically fit. Um, and uh, we'll go through and tell you what else they do. But look at and that. And by the way, what it is, you replace the touch buttons with physical tactile buttons on yes. your steering wheel. Yes. No more capacitive touch. You know, so why why for this? Well, I think any most people know why. Uh, but for me, it's you're not accidentally changing your radio station or your audio track when you turn your steering wheel. And sometimes that would happen without me even touching the buttons, right? One Twice, I accidentally activated cruise control, which is dangerous. You can use them by feel instead of looking, so you don't take your eyes off the road. Uh, the same reason that the on replaces light cluster buttons, right? And you get the, the better tactile feedback, so you know when the button's been pressed. Haptic is difficult to feel sometimes. So we go check out our framework. Um, for this, what did it do? Well, mechanically, it fits perfectly. All you need is the right mechanical buttons and the right trim piece. You screw the buttons in the trim, pop off the old one, pop on the new one. It uses the existing wiring there. You unplug the old connector and plug it into the new buttons. And um, we didn't even have to make any adaptations. You can, but as far as we could tell, you just told it that it was there so it stopped throwing uh, errors to the log saying communication on buttons, right? The caveat, because there always is one, is you have to remove the can pins. At least so far, the only way we've been able to make it work is to remove the CAN bus pins. Otherwise, the horn sounded constantly. Uh, which depending on where you live, maybe that's okay. But for, for us, that's considered rude. Um, no, that's not acceptable, obviously. So you have to cut the campaigns out. Hopefully we can find out a way to make use of those in the future. But And the other downside is you have to remove your airbags. So you have to, to follow the instructions. Well, you will the replace cost. the airbag back into place, but you, you have to know yes. how to remove the, the airbag. For you that remove small. it, right. replace your trim, and place it back where it was. But you don't want the airbag to explode while removing it. Uh, so, yeah. No. No. Uh, no. And yeah, th so there are still a lot of uh, a lot of challenges, but I, I, I am really in like this is the mod that I'm enjoying probably the most. Yeah. And the reason is because as you drive as I drive, I just place the thumbs and you can very easily find just by touching the center yeah. button. And from then you either swipe to the side or or up and down. So you you exactly know what to press without yeah. looking. And that's the point. That's how that's it should better. have been from the factory. 100 percent yeah what's next on the list oh my second favorite mod yeah. the proper number of window switches <laughs> <laughs> so that was another uh that was another interesting mod that we've tackled here um and uh why well it's pro it probably was a good idea but i wasn't a big fan of the rear touch button um that was not great yeah. haptic feedback that um i was um getting uh, and also you couldn't easily find it again without looking, right? So the problem without looking was another uh, big, uh, big problem. And if you hear some weird clicking as you're operating this panel from the back, that's because yes. you're accidentally touching the lock, uh, lock switch, yeah. uh, the, the child lock switch. And that <laughs> for me yeah. was, was happening constantly. Infuriating. Yeah. So, so what was, um, that was one thing that I realized I'm kind of weird. Uh, I, I really now use the cross breeze pattern, meaning if I drive uh, and I want to open the windows, I rarely open one. I open two, but yes. my driver's side and passenger, passenger rear side. Rear. And that was yeah. really hard to do with uh, the um, special yeah. switch. So to make it work, um, yeah. because this mechanically wouldn't fit, yes. uh, we had to um, fabricate a um, part that snaps in. In this case, this is for the VW, uh, sorry, this is for the Audi uh, buttons yes. that kind of snap in. And then <laughs> it's not all. Um, so this is actually a video that uh, that uh, we we have, but this is how it looks um, in real life when you yeah. snap in those those uh, buttons and also the the mirror control. Yeah. So, so there are multiple models. You could have designed it for the Volkswagen mirror yeah. controls and uh -huh. buttons. Yes. Uh, yes. It just the different. It depends on the different connector. Different but connector. this was a great switch that you found, and uh, it just you kind of the we we have a list of all kinds of different parts that will all work. But these and are the details hours. again in the in the video. Yeah. So check the video, yeah. Whichever way we're pointing. <laughs> but and yeah. Uh, 
So mechanically, quite hard uh, because uh, we got to uh, come up with the, the part. Electrically, there is a new harness that we need to build. But um, the easy, uh, the good news is that we don't have to replace the door module because the door module can read these four buttons. Yeah. And it's just a very simple adaptation in configuration uh, of that uh, door module. So, yeah. Physically doing it is not that hard. It's just cutting, having the skills that you had to design the part, which is something I'd like to explore, you know, more in the future. Yeah, yeah. And um, I'm sure we'll yeah. do some video on like 3D printing, maybe designing. So that, yeah. that would be another reason. If you're interested in this space, just um, click subscribe. Yeah, I've heard a rumor that a video on that very topic is coming. Oh, oh so, maybe, yeah. yeah. Okay. Rumor, let's talk about that. And rumors might be true. <laughs> All right. All right. But what is this? Oh, this, this one is, looks like. You no, know, this is the the mod that kind of got me introduced to Jan on the forums. Jan made a whole GitHub page about how he replaced his American style taillights you see on the left there. That's PR code eight VG with European style taillights eight Victor Papa, and the difference is you can see there. Well, first of all, they just look cooler on the right. I think they look fine. And the American is fine. Yeah. But you have amber turn signals. Yeah, that are separate from brake lights. Because separate. on the US model, and that drove me super nuts, mm -hmm. is that VW decided to connect internally in the headlight oh, yeah. or in the taillight, the brake and the turn light. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> so make it harder for you to retrofit the European yeah. taillights. <laughs> um, yeah, but you successfully were able to do this. And so the the why for this one, what's what's the why for this one? Uh, besides just that it looks really great, um, is the yellow turn lights are safer. It's it's more clear that somebody has their turn indicator on versus having their emergency blinkers on where one of the lights is out. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's safer. But also, you know, it has some cool segment animations uh, that you found that you've been able to program. Um, this is more about. The safety for the yellow is is a great feature, but really it's more about yep. fun and the way yep. it looks. And and it's so heartbreaking that when you look at most VWs that are being driven in the United States from mm -hmm. Jeddah, GTI, R, Atlas, Taos, like all these cars have yellow turn lights. Yeah, I did not realize that. <clears throat> anyway, so... so Oh, <laughs> so I would call this very difficult and we'll go to the matrix in a second. But because you can see Jan's original taillight connector on the left, he had to order a new part mm -hmm. where I was keyed differently. The little notch on the left hand side is in a different mm -hmm. location. And in addition to changing out the connector, which is not that hard, what is hard is you had to run three new wires from the front of the vehicle to the back of the vehicle on both sides. Right. Yeah. For each yeah. of the taillights. Yeah. So. And through that, the lift gate also uh, oh, wow, okay. into the, the, the center. Uh, into the centerpiece. Yeah, so yeah, through yeah. the lift gate, depinning and repinning the connectors. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, so if we go to the um, the headlight screen, otherwise, mechanically, they fit perfectly. Yes. You just unscrew <laughs> the old ones and screw in the new ones. Yes. So, and adapting the existing modules, uh, support them. The software can easily be changed. Did you have to unlock SFD to do that? Or were you able to just? I you did. To. Okay. Yes. Okay. But it's an easy change. Um, unfortunately, there's always something, right? And that's the electricity is having to install D-pin and repin new connectors and run three new wires yep. to each of the different pieces. So it's, yep. I would call this very difficult. Yeah, it, this was way more difficult than I expected. Even the the, the coding adaptation, um, yeah, it was not easy. So, okay, 100%. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us here on this uh, on this episode about how the retrofitting framework works in action, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more good stuff to share with you soon, uh, like that how to design your own custom parts that uh, that Jan teased yeah. earlier. And uh, we really appreciate you being here. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye.